I'm Obi, that's Ed, and we are drinking from the Garden Hose, just a couple of cranky old men in training, and of course, your favorite podcast. Find us wherever you get your podcasts, be it Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify. We're there. Enjoy us, like us, rate us, subscribe, all that stuff. You know how to do it better than we know how to say it. Ed, how are you? I'm doing well, Obi. Uh, I have to tell you, I was told just the other day that I'm no longer transitioning. And just for you woke individuals out there, I'm not talking about what you think I'm talking about. I'm talking about transitioning from able-bodied, young-blooded male who's in the prime of his life to a curmudgeon old man. I am actually been labeled a curmudgeon old man because I do not want to go to a live music show at eight o'clock on a Sunday night. Ooh, that does sound a little old. You are I getting up there. I, I don't understand why this show can't start at three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, whose show is it? Well, it's my cousin's show. And uh, the, 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 uh, the gentleman who did our theme song for this podcast, he has a show. He's on tour, actually. He lives in Chicago. And he's going to be performing in Beacon, New York, for anybody who's interested. Uh, you can check him out up there. Uh, the Long Farewells are playing a gig eight o'clock. I'm a, I said I would go. I clicked yes on, on Facebook. So I think you go to jail if you don't go, right? If you click yes on Facebook. But well, I, it's eight o'clock at night. I thought it was going to be three o'clock. What the hell? Uh, it's a concert, dude. Uh, you're definitely showing your oldness. Yeah. Eight o'clock is kind of even a little early for some shows. So I think, uh, yeah, you're showing you're an old man. But I don't know if that means you're fully cranky or a curmudgeon just quite yet. But you're getting there. Definitely. I, I just don't. And then he said, well, he said the show in New York City is at five. Not on that day, a different day. And of course, I'm like, yeah, but who the hell wants to go into New York City? That's a hassle. The traffic, the train, the schedules like, ah, I can't do that. Have I told you the story of Vic and uh, old people? Because this is my, I may have told the story before. And if I have, too bad. So uh, I'm up on vacation. I'm a very young man. I'm not yet uh, of legal drinking age. And I'm, I'm sitting in one place drinking. And, and the kids who, kids, yeah, yeah they're kids they're, who are of legal drinking age are drinking down on the beach. Now they're the older crowd and the younger crowd's hanging out. And then one of the oldest guys from the older crowd comes up to say hi, you know, just being nice, whatever, talking to us. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, sometimes it's good to hang out with the youngins because those guys are so old. He goes, I know they're old because they spent 10 minutes talking about what a pain in the ass it was to drive up here. So, uh, yeah, you're, you're definitely sounding old based on a 25-year-old opinion of old. Yeah, and I just, again, it's a Sunday night. I don't know, I got to get to sleep. Anyway. That's that's how I'm doing. I'm just, you know, I just thought it was interesting. I was told that I had to, you know, stop doing this podcast about transitioning and start doing a podcast about being actually old and curmudgeon. Well, because th that's a damn shame because I got a bit of feedback this week from a new, I don't, I don't call him a new listener, but mostly just a new person giving me feedback. And he loves our uh, cranky old men in training shtick. And if you're going to, be uh, becoming a full-grown cranky old man we might lose a listener who gives us feedback and that that would suck because feedback is a gift it makes our show better it keeps that focused on being just a little younger yeah listen i'm gonna do my best i'll probably go to that show then of course i'm worried about getting covid like i i mean i got a lot of stuff going on that i am definitely transitioning you're going to rub up against somebody, get the monkey pox. It's all. Oh, it's all. oh I'm not going to rub up against somebody like that, my friend. <laughs> oh, no. I heard it's, you got to rub real hard. That's what I heard. Okay. I, I've heard I've heard you don't have to rub as hard. I, I heard it, it can be uh, you know, a lot of dancing alone will do the trick. I'm just saying, you know, you might just want to sit in your chair and be safe. Listen, I listen. I know this isn't what this podcast is about, but I'm going to just tell you right now. If you could get a disease from dancing by yourself, this world, still... would end. this world would end. I'm just telling you that right now. They, I mean, there's stuff made up about dancing. Alone. Dancing with myself. Yeah, like because you like go, gonna go blind. Okay, or, Harry Palms. Harry Palms, right? But we all know that's bullshit, right? 
But can you imagine if there was like a deadly disease that you actually like all of a sudden it started <laughs> spreading by dancing with yourself? Can you those, imagine, can you for those imagine? of you, for those of you who are a little young and haven't picked up on it, dancing with yourself is masturbation. Please go on about your masturbation disease. First of all, if we have anybody listening to this podcast that needed that explanation, <laughs> I don't want them listening to the podcast. Hand in your adult card. Just hand it in. Yeah, because they already didn't get my humor anyway. I mean, you. I can't believe you actually felt the need <laughs> to explain the entendre we were working with there. Like, you're, hey, uh, people might not. Hey, Ed, slow down. You're going too fast. People might not get the joke. Well, the people who didn't get their joke are now asking their parents what masturbation is. <laughs> That's what well, we did. Well, now they think we're two sick old men. And they're like, that's what they said. That's what they say about dirty old men. It's true. Two dirty old men. So it's not like the charm isn't that we suck. Uh, we're not two cranky old men in training. We're just two dirty old men. That's what we are. Well, speaking of dirty old men and um, what we are, I, I have a question for you. It is coming out of left field. I told you I had a subject that I wanted to discuss. Um, this is not about dancing with yourself. This is about dancing with others. And... Uh, birth control and the subject has come up by multiple people to me recently so i'm going to bring it up with you ed vasectomy yes or no first of all i i thought you were going in a different direction i thought we were going to talk about birth control and i understand vasectomy is permanent birth control but i thought you were going to go down a road of having two cranky old men talk about something they don't need anymore birth control and I was about to say, what the hell are you thinking? That's a dumb, that's almost as dumb as having to explain to people what dancing with myself means. But you threw me a curveball. You didn't take the podcast off the rails and you actually asked a good question. And if you can't tell, I'm trying to deflect by now. Maybe I should take a page out of Obi's book and say, what Ed is doing right now is deflecting because he doesn't really want to answer the question. See? See how I did that? That, that? that was good of you because, you know, people couldn't tell. Did you guys get a lot of rain last week when the thunderstorms came through, Obi? Uh, yes. Yes. It shook my balls. It was so much rain and thunder. My whole my testicles were shaking. <laughs> I can't believe that's where we're going with this. <laughs> so This is one of those times I wish people could see Ed because Ed... Ed has a level of uncomfortability here that he's had four sips of beer in this one little segment. It's been, it's been impressive. I'm going to finish this whole beer before I get this answer out. I, th I think I need liquid courage just to answer this. Well, so listen, I'm not going to answer your question, but I will tell you this. If, if I were to get a vasectomy, I would tell you this. It would probably be a really uncomfortable situation to be laying in the, in the, the room with you know a male doctor and probably a female assistant and uh you know probably feeling like you don't feel pain but you feel tugging that would probably be uncomfortable i would think or awkward right feeling tugging and then i would also assume that the feeling or the smelling of uh, burning flesh from cauterization would also be an unnerving feeling as well or a situation if you're laying there and you're getting tugged around at your waist and then something starts to smell like it's burning on fire. Now, that would probably be uncomfortable. I would also think it would be uncomfortable uh, to have to ride in a car home uh, sitting down. Um, I wouldn't know that, though. I wouldn't know that. Well, I think... What would be even more uncomfortable is if you had to go to a pre-visit and the doctor said, okay, we're going to have to just check it to make sure it's, it's okay. And then in came a beautiful nurse to check it to make sure that, that it was okay. I think uh, that would be very uncomfortable, especially with your wife in the room. You know what would probably be really uncomfortable is when that same very beautiful nurse says, I wasn't checking to see if that was okay. That appear apparently does still work. 
<laughs> that would be uncomfortable. But especially, so, especially with your wife in the room. Yeah. I, I, I actually think, though, that while that would be uncomfortable, probably the most uncomfortable thing. And again, I'm not answering this question, but what I'm going to tell you is it would probably be uncomfortable when you have to go back after the procedure with the sample to prove that the procedure worked. And you have to hand that sample over to a live human being who happens to be a female. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, but it's, what is really weird is then you have like an hour lunch and the doctor is close enough so that you use your hour lunch as a wasted lunch to create said sample. Uh, that, that's a kind of a strange experience, I would bet. Well, I think I'm, I'm not sure. Listen, I haven't been through this, but I would think that sample isn't really a wasted lunch. It might actually be the best lunch break you ever had. It could be somebody's wasted lunch, I'm just saying. I mean, it could be a, a pretty amazing lunch. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, but I, you know... When you like the thing is, think about this: you're handing the sample over, and the the lady behind the counter makes eye contact with you. Uh, that 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 would be weird. But I gotta yeah. tell you, what I would find unnerving is at first thinking about it before you might want to get it done. There's got to be a sort of sense of emasculation in the beginning of what I'm gonna do. What? I'm going to have what done to me? I think that would be a weird emotional trek uh, in the beginning before someone would go and get that done. No, I'm not so sure about that. I, I'm not so sure that uh, my brain is wired that way. I think my brain would probably be wired in a different way, which would be like, um, this is really practical and economical and it's the best thing. <laughs> And so I wouldn't, and, and, and so if, if I were, you know, to have ever been in that position, that's how I probably would have approached it. And I probably would have um, never had any doubts and just gone for it. And again, I'm thinking the doubts would come into play with the smelling of burning flesh and the tugging. I, I think that you're, uh, were, I think that if you were put in that position, you would have been a better man and partner uh, then I think I would have been if I was in that situation. I think I would have been hesitant, a little uncomfortable, a little nervous until um, said decision was made. I probably then, when I went to the doctors, need to take several volume um, so I wouldn't notice what was happening, tugging, burning, things like that. I wouldn't even know that was going on uh, and not really understand what's happening until I got home with like possibly thinking I might have to put frozen peas every now and again near my testicles. I think that's how I think I would have thought about it. Uh, but I bet you, I think it would be great to know that no one was ever gonna have to have a baby and you could just do it whenever and however you wanted, assuming your wife was willing. I think that, you know, that raw dogging ability is, is probably a great, a great, a great feeling. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I think you got you does TMI the, the whole raw dogging thing, but I, I will say the um the part he said the vasectomy is not for eternally raw dogging with your wife. What is it for? I mean uh, I don't think that's TMI, dude. Unless your definition of raw dog's different than mine. I, I I I think what I I really picked up on was uh you, you said you said whenever, which, okay, but however. I didn't know the how had an impact on the pregnancy part. Like, like I know the whenever doesn't, but I didn't know the however does. So, so it's really interesting that you can do it however if you get a vasectomy and be safe. That, that was interesting to me. Well, I guess scientifically, there's, there's no difference. I would have to ask a guy who's you know possibly gone through that. But you know, I just throwing it out there for those for those folks who um, <laughs> I can't even say. For those 
to those folks who have no idea what we're talking about. But listen, yeah. uh, here's the best part about this, and this is for our audience right now. Um, you you reached out to me earlier this week, and you said that you you got some feedback from a new listener, and that you were inspired by this feedback and this new listener <laughs> to ask me a question, and you wanted to get my raw action, uh, my raw answer. <laughs> So <laughs> you want to get raw action. I know that, but you, we get monkey pox if you go that way, but don't rub too much. Don't rub too much. <laughs> right. Right. So listen. Um, and so I just want to, and then this is the question you asked. So this is like the surprise podcast episode, right? Like I wasn't supposed to know what was coming. So, but now my head can't stop thinking about how did this new listener inspire this question? All, all I will say is, um, is he, is he a urologist? <laughs> that would be best. That would, that would be the easiest answer, but no, uh, it was, uh, the, the listener is obviously not a complete stranger to me. And we were just talking how things go and where things going. And that question about that, that a vasectomy was brought up amongst the many things we were talking about, whether this person got one, wants one, his wife wants him to get one, whatever that whatever it could or couldn't be. And I said, and I've been, I talked to another friend of mine uh, cause he did get one and he was talking about the joys of it. And then it's all over the news, uh, not to go down the Roe versus way thing, but apparently it's a higher Google search this month because of that. So it's been around and he was like the final, like this should be the conversation with dad. I'm getting feedback from this dude. And we ended up talking about this thing. So uh, okay, I appreciate that explanation, Obi, but I'm still I'm still a little perplexed and intrigued. So this this obviously a gentleman comes up to you, says, "Hey, Obi, heard the podcast, awesome stuff. Love the fact that you're cranky men in training. It's great shtick. By the way, did you get snipped? I mean, how does that, I like? It just doesn't come up." Uh. I don't want to give about too much information about the guy. Not that anyone, he knows who he is, probably. I uh, think he already does if he inspired this. Unless, uh, he so, talks to, unless he talks to everybody about it. So basically, new father, talk to me. Oh, I love the shtick. Probably because I'm just joining the shtick. Oh, yeah, how's it going being a dad? It's great. Uh, you have another one. Actually, no, thinking of set to me. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's a lot of information to share with somebody. You just, you could just answer that question by saying, eh, not sure yet. We're going to see. You could. Uh, he's a sharing type of guy. You obviously. Know. Obviously. Obviously. He, obviously. Goes, he goes straight to like, yeah, one's great. I'm going to have a vasectomy <laughs> now. Listen, but I was right. All, all not kidding aside, that was a great bit. That was a great stick we just had there. I don't know how long the episode is because the clock's not showing, but that was a great, a great conversation. And so he should be rewarded for his openness leading to our openness about what we would have done if we were in that situation. Yeah. So if you're gonna reward him, you should say his name. Nope. <laughs> no, no. You're not gonna fall for that. Not gonna fall for that. He he no, no. At least he's a gentleman. At yes. Least he, at least you said he was a, a good young man. Yeah, he's not. He's a. He's younger than 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 us, but I I don't he, think he, he he better be damn young. But not. If he, but if he if he just not, had his first kid. But not that much younger than us. Like that was part of it. Like obviously, I'm an older father. Bro, if if okay, so this is uh, this is even a better topic. <laughs> so if this guy comes up to me, and he's slightly young, slightly. Are we talking uh, like what are we talking? Five years younger? I'm thinking five to ten. Five to ten. Five okay. to ten. All right, that's great. That still goes for what I was about to say. Yeah. If this guy comes up to me, he's gonna stop listening after I say. <laughs> but if this guy is, if this guy comes up to me, he's like, "Yo, love the podcast." Just I'm like, "Yeah, hey, congratulations on your on your newborn." Uh, yeah. <laughs> Think about getting a vasectomy. You know what my response would be? Dude, should have got it two year two years ago. You're way too old to be running after a toddler. Like the knees hurt when you get out of bed in the morning before you even have to do anything, right? And God forbid if I had that problem when I was running after kids. Uh, absolutely. He, uh, yes, 
I, I wholeheartedly agree with him. That was a good idea. We'll just we'll just say we'll, we'll go. I don't want to get too further into details. I'm gonna, then, I, I know because then you're going to say his name by accident, and then I'll have won the I'll have won the bit. But listen, right. I I'll, I'll say this. I will say this. The the, the one thing that uh, my wife was probably right about. Well, no, my wife's right about everything. Okay, but maybe the first earliest thing I remember my wife being right about because she's right about everything. She wanted to have kids right away, right? And I was like, nah, nah, let's enjoy our lives. Let's enjoy our lives, right? She was probably right about that. Like, if we had the kids five years earlier, like right after we got married, I would be five years younger right now. Or I'd be the same age and my kids would be five years older. But either way, Obi, it would be better on my knees. Uh, I mean, I wish I had a few more years with my wife uh, without kids. But not many more. Not not many. If my your kids, your 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 oldest is a few years younger than my oldest, and you're young, like you you're right. Where I I could if I was any further down the line than you, woo, that'd be I'm the end pushing of my it back. You I'm are pushing. you are on the edge. You I'm are pushing on the edge. it. You are definitely pushing it. Yeah, you're which is edge. why which is why I can say the stuff I'm saying about the feedback oh. guy. Oh yeah, yeah. You're, you're, I know what I'm talking about. Listen to this. I got. I got to tell you a story. Maybe this will end it. Maybe it won't, but I'll tell you this story. So as we've talked about before, I, uh, I, one of my kids plays a lot of basketball. And this past weekend was her last AAU travel basketball tournament ever, right? So you don't play after you're, uh, as you're going to senior high school, that's it. And then you go off to college, hopefully, right? So I, I figured out, Obi, I spent, you ready? For, poor kid, right? After I tell you the story, I've spent 21 nights in a hotel with her since Sno- April. Since, since snoring away. Since April for basketball, right? 21 nights. Some of those nights, my wife and my other daughter were there. But most of those nights, it was just me and my oldest daughter, right? And she's got, God bless her. She complains about my snoring all the time. She has a sleep mask with noise-canceling headphones in it. And she, she wears that and when she goes to bed puts on her music so she can't hear me she says she still hears me but it's enough to sleep well this last night it, it couldn't even be scripted any better the last night sunday night monday was the last day of the tournament and that was gonna be it so sunday night the last night we're in a hotel for basketball just me and her and uh i remember consciously deciding at some point after midnight um i was gonna sleep on my back which is very bad um for snoring as my wife will tell you and the next thing I remember, I was woken up with some blunt force trauma. <laughs> and uh, I opened my eyes. And after I get jolted, I open my eyes. And above me is my daughter standing above me with her pillow above her head, striking back down on me as she hits me again. So she hit me at least twice. Maybe hit me again. After I'm like, what are you doing? And then I think she might have hit me one more time. And she's like, you got to shut up and go to sleep. You got to roll over. Do something. You're so loud. And I just, I, you know, I was two in the morning. I was in the middle of sleep. I just said, that's for nostalgia purposes. And then I rolled over and went back to sleep. So she will always remember the night her dad was snoring so loud. She had to assault him <laughs> that, to get him that, to stop. That's fantastic. That is that is fantastic. Can you have, can you imagine waking up? Have you ever done this? Have you ever woken up with someone like threatening bodily injury to you? Yeah, yeah. Sons do that shit all the time. <laughs> all the time. Good. That's a good thing you have your sword training. They probably stopped doing that shit now, right? No, 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 because they're not worried about the sword at all. They don't. They, they're like Boom. the bears that's- aren't. The bears aren't worried about your swords either. <laughs> yeah, well, one of them is one of them is right that they won't get tested. But I I have to say, one of our favorite feedback people, somebody who uh, always seems to have a bone to pick with you, my brother, <laughs> agreed <laughs> agreed with you this week. Oh, about uh, the fashion sense of the uh, disc golfers. I, I saw my brother on Friday. I said, you got to listen. I can't wait to hear your feedback when we're playing because we talked all about this golf. I get there. First thing he says, oh, I listened. I was like, oh, great. He goes, Ed's right. He's an asshole. I go, Ed's an asshole? He goes, no. That guy on the plane, I don't care what his excuse is. You're in the back of the plane. You get off last. He's an asshole. That's right. That's right. 
but it wasn't a guy. It was a woman. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He's an <laughs> asshole. I'm sure he was. He was adamant. He was like, "How could you defend that?" He didn't care anything about the, we're playing disc golf. He didn't care anything about any of the disc golf. That guy's an ass. He he was he was on fire about it. He was on fire about it. What, was he wearing Birkenstocks while he's uh, on fire? No, my brother wears running shoes when he uh, nice, plays this nice yes. cargo shorts, cargo shorts. Uh, I don't know what kind of shorts or long pants he wears. Okay, all right. Well. I'm, I'm not fully vetted his out. My brother is not a hippie though, so as long as he agrees with me, that's all that really matters. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's. He agreed with you. He, he thought that was that was his con. He had nothing to say about any of the other, rest of the show, and just that that was his that was his whole whole thing on the show. Okay. That's what he took away. Something we didn't put in any of our promotions for the show, which goes to show you, like we don't know what people are going to like at all. Well, or, and, or and, react and, to. And, and, and quite frankly, I like once we're done uh, recording this, I don't remember what we even talked about. <laughs> I try sometimes to take notes, but other times I'm fidgeting with crap. Like, I don't know if you're just like watching like, what is he playing with this week? It, yeah, I I got nothing. Like, I see the title when you upload it. I see the title. So I'm like, oh, that jogs the memory of at least we talked about that. Like, so like this week, for example, if you pick a title other than Dancing With Myself, which by the way, you should pick that title, but Dancing With My Own Pot or something. Potty, potty with myself or yeah 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 if, if you don't pick that we need a new uh podcast title uh person but if you don't pick that or if you don't pick um go get a vasectomy while you listen to this pot as the title uh i will not know what we talked about i swear to god good good uh, and and that's terrible because i do most of the promotion i know what... <laughs> it's the <laughs> And that's why, like, I don't know, sometimes you don't see a lot because <laughs> I don't know what we talked about. Sometimes I remember I'll grab like two or three pictures real quick and then I'll be able to promote it. But you're right. I'm like, oh, I'm telling you, the greatest picture I ever the greatest picture I ever pulled for a promotion of this podcast was when we talked about the prom. And I got that picture off the Internet of the geeky high school kid staring at the cleavage of his prom date in the picture. Yes, that's the yes. greatest picture. That's the greatest picture I ever pulled for this podcast. That was one of the best. I agree. I like some of your Gen X pictures as well. Yeah, but you did pick a title, so I don't have to come. I totally forgot we talked about masturbation. So just, just oh, again. there you go again. For those that are slow in the back, Obi had to ruin it for you. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if you didn't say that right and you didn't have to like let the secret out. And you ran into somebody and they're like, hey, love the podcast. I dance with myself a lot. And you're like, uh, I shouldn't be sharing that with you. No, man, I go to the clubs, man. And they got a good DJ. And I just get out. I don't care if anyone goes out there on the dance floor with me. Now, wouldn't that be the, you'd probably piss your pants if that happened, right? But no, it won't happen now because you screwed it up. I, I did. I did. I screwed it up. <sighs> Nothing I can do about that now. Can you I imagine, though, if somebody admitted to dancing with themselves? But weren't really admitting to dancing with themselves. Yeah, yeah, dancing myself. Oh yeah, yeah, we're out there dancing. Oh, dance with great song. Love it all the time. Dance with myself. Been doing yeah. it for years. Totally, yeah, yeah. totally into yeah. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But that that won't happen. No, 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 no. It won't. Well, well, that is why we suck. <laughs> or or don't or don't suck because we're with ourselves. But I digress. Well, you are into martial arts. I I cannot suck with myself. That's not e that's not even a song, dude. Not even a song. That's so like graphic. We have gone a little off the rails do, this week. Do you remember my parents listened? At least my mom does. My dad refuses to. My dad's like, my dad's like. First of all, what's a podcast? Second of all, Ed's not funny. <laughs> and so my dad, my dad refuses to listen because I don't think he knows how to. But my mom listens to the chip. My mom told me like uh, one of the other episodes, and I forget what we talk about, but she said one of those other episodes, she, was, she said she was laughing out loud at the gym on the treadmill and she thought people were looking at her. 
Well, this time she she won't be laughing. Apologies. Oh no 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 no. I think, I think, and maybe maybe I should not say this, but I think this one's right up her alley. Oh, so I don't have to worry about your mom listening. She's got a good sense of humor. I'm not surprised since you don't describe your dad as having one at all. Well, like I said, my dad doesn't think me. I'm funny. My dad doesn't think I'm funny. He doesn't understand. He's like, you're annoying me. <laughs> Leave. Remember, it's the same guy who shot me with a BB gun. So yeah. I obviously was annoying that day. Yeah. That's kind of what I do. Did I? Re- Maybe we'll do this on another podcast because we're running long here. But I also got kicked off of family vacations once. And we should talk about that sometime. But Oh, okay. That- I, I was, my dad got so pissed at me and my brother that he's like, that's it. You're never going on family vacations again. I'm done with it. Never again. I think that's pretty typical. Did you go on family vacations again? Oh, it took like three or four years. I mean, let me tell you something about my dad. He doesn't make threats. He's not like I've told you. He said he was going to shoot me with a BB gun. If I threw another snowball, I threw another snowball. He had no choice but to shoot me with a BB gun because he's not one that makes idle threats. So when he banned me from vacations, he actually really lived up to it. I didn't go on another family vacation for like three or four years. And, and I'll tell you what, he was effective at banning me from family vacations that he was paying for. Because I oh. never went on another one that he paid for. Well, I, uh, I, have, I too put a stop to family vacations for the most part with my family. I will go on vacation with any two people in my family, but I will not go on vacation with all three. And other than when we were searching for schools for my older son, that that rule has held. That rule has stuck. I'm go. I'm going my summer vacation this year. Just my youngest. Then in September, just my wife. Like that's it. No, all four of us cannot cannot go someplace together. I was, all right. So Obi, let's stick a pin in this one. This this yeah. is an episode. No doubt about it. This is an episode. So we, we've done vacations before, but we can revisit it again now that we're well, we never we never did the banning of, fa- of kids <laughs> of people from family vacation. So Correct. we will do it. Okay. We we did we did a family, we did a vacation episode about how we're all lovey dovey and we like our family. Right. Let's get some real, let's get some truth out there. Let's let's spill the tea, if you will. Exactly. All right, Obi. All right, so with that, we will bring this episode to a close. Remember, the charm is that we suck. I'm Obi, that's Ed. See you next week on Drinking from the Garden Hose.